Thank you, Mr. Deputy Chairman, for the opportunity to initiate the debate on the Negotiable, negotiable Instruments Amendment Bill 2017. Um, it's uh, obviously very important legislation, as the Honourable Minister has just explained, to address some of the existing concerns around check payments in our country. And for that very reason, the Indian National Congress, which has worked tirelessly to represent the voices of small, medium, and even, when appropriate, big industry, does not object to it on principle. But the question I have to ask the Minister is, is this version of the bill the best that we can do for this country at a time when the strains and stresses on the economy have reached an all-time high due to the twin disasters of demonetization, which was a bad idea implemented badly, and the botched rollout of GST, which was a good idea implemented badly. Now, in these circumstances, unfortunately, the answer is no, and I will try and explain what my concerns are. They differ slightly from my honorable neighbor, uh, Mr. Sampath, but, but on the constitutionality, I'm sure he will address the matter. My concern is about the practicality. Now, what is the purpose of the bill? The purpose of the bill is to deal with check bouncing, ensure that we have, therefore, one more contribution to the ease of doing business, the annual set of metrics on commercial activity undertaken by the World Bank, which our Prime Minister has announced as a major target for this country. As you know, the Prime Minister said that he wanted to put India in the first 50 of the countries uh, uh, in the ease of uh, business uh, ranking, uh, ease of doing business ranking, and that's a, a laudable, if challenging objective, which will certainly be undermined if we don't fix our Czech system. Having said that, uh, we now have the word of the World Bank's own chief economist, Paul Romer, who says there are serious flaws in the methodology employed in worrying about ease of business rankings. So maybe that is not what we should do. We should instead be looking much more at the decent lives of our own citizens and ask ourselves, can we do more? Can the government and this parliament do more to help struggling citizens uh, who are coping with the sort of check vapacy that happens. Somebody gives them a check that they have no intention of honoring. They then end up with the check bouncing and the innocent citizen is left without recourse under our existing laws. Now, Mr. S Mr. Chairman, we all know that investment and the inflow of capital into our country are both essential for the development of our nation. We all know that without checks, you can't have commercial activity. We can talk all we like about a cashless society, but checks are the first sign of a cashless society before we get into credit and debit cards. In fact, I've, I've looked into this, and it seems that commercial transactions um, in August 2017 alone, just to take one, one month, the transactions by check were more than six lakh crore rupees, which is more than three times the amount conducted in debit card transactions or credit card transactions in our country. And as per the Reserve Bank of India's annual report in the last fiscal year for which we had this report, 2016-17, there were 74 lakh crore rupees in transactions. So the credibility of checks is not only important for corporate entities, but also for ordinary people when they receive payments such as their salaries in the form of checks. Now, the existing law, Mr. Chairman, has a swift procedure under Chapter 17 of the Negotiable Instruments Act on, on check bounces. There was an amendment made in 1988, which is Section 138, in order to give credibility to the settlement of liabilities. And then in 2002, the Act was again amended to provide for the summary trial of wrongdoers in such cases. And the idea was, of course, something that I will address later, that is the the delays already in the judicial process even then. But unfortunately, despite those two amendments, our courts are clogged with innumerable check bounce cases, creating tremendous stress on the judiciary and hurting the interests of the aggrieved parties. And unfortunately, the slow pace of deciding these cases, uh, because of the sheer backlog involved, has not only undermined the ease of doing business it has actually made it, it has improved the ease of doing cheating in our country. Now, according to the 213th report of the Law Commission, the Law Commission of India, 
There are 38 lakh check dishonor cases pending before our courts in 2008, which constitutes 20% of all the criminal cases in India. I'm not even sure we realize this house had realized that one fifth of all the criminal cases in India actually involve check bouncing. This is a very serious problem and the bill proposed does not do enough to address it. And I'll explain why. What has been proposed certainly is desirable. It will strengthen the purpose of the existing bill. But though these measures may be necessary, Mr. Minister, they are not sufficient. They're not sufficient <coughs> to handle the very, very serious dimensions of the problem. For instance, the interim compensation to the complainant can only be ordered by the court after the accused has been brought to the court and pleads his innocence at the stage of framing of charges. Now, what we all know is you can't always bring these chaps to the court. A lot of time is spent even trying to serve a summons to the accused. They don't cooperate, they often abscond, or they evade the arms of the law in a bit to frustrate the entire participation in the trial, there is a flaw that I already mentioned last week in addressing the Fugitive Economic Offenders Bill. It does not